Good morning. Some of us are right about that. Good morning. There it is. There it is. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, and also with you. Yes. It is uh, good to be together this morning. It is different to be together this morning uh, in this way. It's, it's strange how, uh, at least for me, as I came into this space and I was getting, getting ready for our worship this morning, the space feels so familiar and yet so different all at the same time. It is almost two years to the day uh, since we, we have been uh, inside for worship. It was, it was March 13th of 2020 when the world kind of shut down for, for a while, or at least our, our culture shut down for a while. And, uh, and here we are again, March 13th of 2022. And we can think back about all of the things that have happened over, over the last couple of years, the, the things that have been very hard, uh, very heartbreaking, very tragic, the things that have been joyful and beautiful and taught us new things that we wouldn't have, have known or experienced uh, because of that time. And so as, as we say all of the time, uh, you know, all of the things that, that uh, we bring today with, with our uh, history, with our week behind us, with our week ahead, with our emotions from uh, being in this space of all kinds, God welcomes them into this space as we continue to, to journey together. Uh, we did not stop for a while and then restart. This has been one long part of God's story with us. Uh, and it, it, it has been the same story. This is just the next page. Okay. Leslie. Oh, so if you're, if you're joining us from outside, we're asking if, if there's somebody outside who could count how many cars there are outside, and at the end, somebody will be, be out to, to take the number from, from you? Okay. Oh. Oh, they are not getting any audio. Okay. Oh, I see, all right. Bill, Bill is saying that uh, the, 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 because we are in here, we didn't plug the FM tuner in today. And so we're going to plug the FM tuner in uh, so that they can be getting the audio also. Hmm? <laughs> it's, 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 it's the voice of God. It comes in many different ways. <laughs> Oh, is, is that why you thought folks were out there too? Oh, okay, yes, yes, sorry, no, that's, that's the recording. That was, a, that was a recording that I played, so, but just in case, you never know, right? Better safe than sorry. Okay, thanks, Bill. Um, and so it is good to be together today, and as, as we gather, just a few reminders about uh, the, the ways in which we're trying to gather in safety. Uh, if you are physically present with us here today, thank you all for, for wearing masks. We'll do masks and we'll do distancing at this time. Um, there is hand sanitizer for you and we hope that you will use that on your way in and your way out. There are uh, Lysol wipes and we, we ask that if you're in a pew, uh, uh, that before you leave, if you can take one and just wipe down the wood parts real fast. Uh, we are going to continue for the time being not to use uh, hymnals or physical Bibles, but to print those things in the bulletin, which also means that you who are joining us through YouTube also will, will uh, we will continue to stream and we will continue to share uh, all of the prayers and everything online, so you will continue to have them to join with us in worship. Uh, you'll notice if you read the letter that went out or was posted on Facebook, there are other little requests. We're limiting the rooms that we're in. Uh, we're asking if you need to use the restroom that you use the one in Fellowship Hall, not the ones down, uh, downstairs, things like that. So please, if you haven't yet, do make sure that you take a look at that letter. Uh, it's what is allowing us to be present to one another and safe um, in this space. And friends, it is good to be present with you 
in this space, present with you through YouTube, and present in the love of Jesus Christ in whose name we gather. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Would you join me this morning in our responsive opening prayer? Today, God comes to us to gather us in worship, to wait in silence for the word, to sit at the table of grace. Tomorrow, the word of God comes, calling us to go forth and serve, to bring hope to those who have none, to love all tossed aside by indifference. The next day, and the next day, the Holy Spirit will come so we might discover the gift of peace and offer it to our broken world. Today, tomorrow, and every day, we worship you, O Christ. Amen. Would you join me in our Lenten approach? Offered a feast at Grace's table, God of the covenant, we choose to gorge ourselves on the empty calories of greed. Invited to live in your house, we move into death's fear-infested boarding house. Though you promise to be with us, we toss you aside, chasing after those who will abandon us at the first chance. But you will not let the foxes of foolishness devour us, mothering God but will gather us under the shelter of your love. You do so in order to give us that peace which heals us, that wonder which surprises us, and that faith which enables us to let go of the present, to walk into the covenant of grace made possible through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Friends, hear the good news. God does not abandon us. Like a border collie, God gathers us up, leading us to that shelter of love and life. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, God's grace rests upon us and gives us hope and mercy. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. Would you join in our opening hymn together, My Song is Love Unknown. They crowd his way 
and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, hosannas to their King. Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. Hear these words from the book of Philippians. Stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running this same course, headed for this same goal. There are many out there taking other paths, choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. All they want is easy street. They hate Christ's cross, but Easy Street is a dead-end street. Those who live there make their bellies their God. Belches are their praise, and and all they can think of is their appetites. But there's far more to life for us. We're citizens of high heaven. We're waiting the arrival of the Savior, the Master, Jesus Christ, who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like his own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which he is putting everything as it should be, under and around him. My dear, dear friends, I love you so much. I do want the very best for you. You make me feel such joy, fill me with such pride, Don't waver. Stay on track. 
steady in God. Here are our gospel reading this morning from Luke. At that very same hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. And you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Holy Scripture of God. Thanks be to God. So a, a number of years ago, I, uh, I had a professional coach. His name uh, is Steve Hill, uh, Reverend Steve Hill. And one of the things that he taught me about was about the three levels of reality. That's what he called them, the three levels of reality. And the first level of reality is uh, what he called the observable. The observable. Okay, so one of the benefits of, of being back in this space is that we can see each other and interact with each other, okay? So when I ask questions, sometimes there'll they'll be actual ones to answer, and this is one of those. What is this? A candle, okay. Using just your observation, what can you tell me about this candle? What is the reality of it? It is what? Tell me about it. It's, well, we can't see that it's holy, right? We can believe that it's holy, but we can't observe that it's holy. We can feel that way. It's white, it's white, what else? It's burning, it's lit, right, what else? It's beautiful to look at, right? There's something beautiful about it. What else? It's not really, it's not really a candle. Yes, look, see? And I'll, I'll relate that here in a sec, but see? Right? It's, it's actually, it's, I mean, it is a real candle, but it's, it's sort of uh, more complicated than that. Yes. What else? It's a taper candle, right? It's not a tea light or a, or a votive. It's a taper, sort of. Um, it's on a brass, brass stand. It's, it's on the communion table, right? We can say lots of observable things. So that's what, what Reverend Hill called it, sort of the, the uh, basic stuff, right? That's, that's the foundational, that's, the, that's the, uh, the first surface level of reality is what is observable. We can observe the candle. The level that he went deeper with, he says to, to go a little deeper, the next level of reality is, what is the purpose of that thing? So what's the purpose of this candle? Why do we have it? It gives light. So part of it is a very practical piece, right? It gives light, absolutely. What other purposes does it serve? The light is a symbol of? of the presence of God, right, yeah, the presence of Christ, the presence of God, the presence of spirit. We have a symbol, so what is the purpose of it? The purpose of it is to act as a visible symbol of the presence of God, the presence of Christ. It also gives us light. Uh, there's actually some historic debate as to which of those things came first. Do we have the candle because we need the light and then we give it, give it the theology, or do we put a candle there for theological purposes and enjoy the fact that it also gives us light? but it has both of those purposes, right? And maybe some more. We could think of some other things we might, we might imbue it with purpose of. The foundational level below that, right, for, for reality is the origins. Where does all this stuff originate from? So if, if we have a candle, we go a little deeper, the purpose of the candle is, is in part to remind us of, of the, the presence of God why do we want to be reminded of the, the visual, why, we, why do we want to visually be reminded of the presence of God? Yeah. 
it's easy to forget, right? We, we, want to, we want to remember. We don't want to forget that God is there. Perhaps we want to experience God's love, right? We want to, to, uh, to uh, uh, be, be in a space where we can look and we can see there, there is the one who loves us and we can feel that, right? So if we take that in reverse, we begin at the place that says, I really want to feel God's love and I want to be able to see that. I want to see that God's love is, is with me. So I need something that is going to uh, help, uh, help to, to make me be able to see that presence of love. And I'm going to choose a candle. And in particular, I'm going to choose a candle. I'm going to make it a white candle on a stand. I'm going to light the candle. I'm going to, it's going to be sort of a, a fancy candle so that the reason that they're, they're uh, not a real candle is that they always stay the same height that way. Right? So we're going we're gonna to have it be this way. Is this the only way to visually represent the presence of Christ? Could you do something else to have a visual representation of the presence of Christ? You could have a cross, right? A cross is another representation of the presence of Christ. You could have, real simple, you could have a tea light instead of a taper. Right? Uh, and it still would symbolize it. We know Christ by other names, right? What are some of the other uh, earthly, you know, we, we can have a physical representation of it that we know Christ as. Light is one. What else do we know Christ as? Word, right? We've got books, right? Physical things that have words in them, right? And so we put a Bible on a stand. What else? Stained glass windows, right? And they're letting in some light, aren't they? And there's beauty and color from those, too. He's, the, word, he's the, uh, the bread of life, right? And so when we do communion, we have bread. He is the living waters. So we could say, instead of a candle, we're going to take the candle away, we're going to put a fountain there. Because I want the visual of water this week. That's, that's my focus for how I'm going to see the presence of Christ this week. Now, what his point was, Reverend Hill in walking through the different levels of reality, was to say change happens and transition happens. And the more locked in we are at the higher levels, the harder it is for us to go through change or transition. The more limited and bound we become by the real tight specifics of, of how something has to be, right? Uh, because we're tied to that reality of it. If we have to have a candle, if the candle has to be white, if it has to be here, right? You'll even notice, right, it, it, uh, there's cutouts actually on that ledge where the candles often are. They're not there today, they're on the table. If they have to be in those cutouts, right, somebody's really annoyed right now because they're not there, they're on the table, right? If it has to be these things, then we're very limited we're very bound by those exact specifics in order to feel the presence of Christ. If we're able to remember, it's not about the candle. It's really about wanting a representation of Christ that I can see in my space. Then it doesn't matter if they're up there or if they're on the table. It doesn't matter if it's a candle or a fountain or a bread or a book or it just, we, there's something that helps us, right? If we can go even deeper, it doesn't have to be a visual representation. We want to know that God is with us. It doesn't have to be visual. We could have an auditory representation. Music, exactly. Birds, song, right? One another and our voices in this space. The deeper we're able to go, the more we're able to open up the possibilities of how God will reveal God's self to us. The tighter we go on things, uh, the harder it is to navigate when something changes or there's transition or, or something doesn't work out exactly how we want it to because we need that really specific thing of reality. Right? This congregation has done amazing with that and beautifully in a very challenging couple of years because let's use another uh, easy church-related example. We'll, we'll use a couple non-church ones, too, but let's use a church-related example. What are we in right now? 
sanctuary. Most, most of us call it, technically it's the nave, but most of us call it the sanctuary. We're in the sanctuary. What can you observe about the sanctuary? Just the top level. It's bright. It's got chandeliers. It's got pews. It's got stained glass. It's got a chancel. It's got an organ, right? That's the surface level observable stuff. What's the purpose of a sanctuary? Safety. It harbors us, right? Yeah. That's actually where it gets the term nave, is it's like the upside down hull of a boat. It protects. Uh, yes, yeah, our, we have a flat roof, but most have that peaked roof. If you imagine it being upside down, it looks like the hull of a boat, a nave. Um, what else is, could be the purpose of the sanctuary? It's a gathering place. It's a place where we can be together, right? I find the sanctuary to be sacred space. It's a special thing. It's carved out to say this space will be sacred for us in this time, right? May, may you be done other things with it at other times, but for this time, it's a sacred space. But we just spent two years out in a parking lot. We are on YouTube. We are doing things in different ways that don't include this particular space. For those of us, I would wager, who are more tied to that surface level of, of, uh, of reality, right? I have to have the pews. I have to have that space. I have to have the windows. I really need to have these things. It was probably a very rough transition to being in the parking lot because that's the level of reality that we're at. And that's not a critique. We all are at different levels of reality for all kinds of stuff in our life. That's just an awareness. For those that were able to even go to the next level and say, I need a, a space that feels safe. I need a space that I can see as a sacred. I need a space uh, that, uh, that we can gather together, right? The parking lot stood to be all of those things. And so we had the capacity more easily. Those folks that, that were looking at it at that level of reality probably have an easier time saying, this is one way to do that. That's a way to do that. A park is a way to do that, right? The beach is a way to do that. A house is a way to do that. We've got different possibilities for how we can move and how we can allow God to work in us and through us if we're able to hold the deeper levels of reality, right? This is what I need, but I can get it lots of different ways. God, what will you present me with this morning? What will you present me with today? What will you present me with in this moment? It may or may not look like what I want, but thy will be done. That's what we say, right? It's not easy. It's not easy. I'll give you an example from my own life. There's a park that I always go to to pray in a, a special spot that I absolutely love, and, and that's where I go to just be or to think or to pray or to just enjoy you know, creation. That's where I go, and I loved that spot. And then one day I pulled into that spot and they're cutting all the trees down in the parking lot. And I was annoyed. And I thought, you're messing with my stuff. Stop messing with my stuff. I like my stuff, leave it alone, what are you doing? And I was convinced that because this had happened, that space was done for me. I just was not going to be able to, to get that spirituality in that space anymore because somebody had messed with it. And it, it wasn't what I wanted it to look like. But as I began to think a little bit more, I began to realize, wait, I'm looking at that surface level of reality. I, I, you know, the trees, those were the trees that were there, now they're gone, my stuff got changed, my stuff got moved, it transitioned. But what's the next level? Well, I wanna be in creation. I wanna be around God's creation. I want to you know, hear certain sounds or, or hear some sounds that will remind me of God's creation. I want to see certain things that will remind me of God's creation. It doesn't have to be those trees. I just need some of that stuff to surround myself with. And as I began to, to think that way, instead I began to be able to let go a little bit. 
and be able to see maybe there is a chance for having the sacred in this space after all. And when I was able to get down a little deeper, I was able to get to that place that said, this is still a beautiful space. It is still a place that I can connect with God in my own spirit and that I can do my thinking. And all of a sudden, when I was able to see it in that level and, and let some of that stuff go that it had to be just so, I've connected with God there very well. It's different. It's not the same. It's, it's a little bit of a different space than it had been. But God and I are connecting there, and it's just fine. It's just fine. And God might even be working with me now in that space, in those ways, in a different way than God could have worked with me if it had stayed the same. Right? I'll give you one other example that I think is, is powerful because what I hear in Paul's message today, right? when, when, when Paul says, uh, uh, keep your eye on the goal, keep your eye on the goal, Part of what I hear in that, if you look at the fullness of the text, is that we as a citizens of heaven and earth, that part of our job as citizens of heaven is to, to learn to see differently. It's to grow and mature in our capacity to see the world. And that part of that growth and maturation is to be able to see things more regularly at deeper and deeper levels, to make a, a life practice out of seeing them at the deeper levels. And what I hear him saying a little bit is, is uh, we need to be good at that because he also says in there, look to the people who are doing it well, right? Look to the people who have their eyes on that goal, right? So if this is a hard thing for you, look to the people who are doing it well. If being in the parking lot was hard, that transition was hard, who was it easy for? Talk to them, learn from them, ask them about it, right? How do we learn to, to deepen a little bit? Well, we need to learn to do this, too, as disciples and as the church. If we want to have something of, of spiritual maturity to be able to share with the rest of the world. And I'll give you an example of a beautiful place that I saw this and the kind of, kind of seeing uh, that we're trying to cultivate a little bit. A friend of mine shared an article, it was really just a few paragraphs, a number of weeks ago. And it was written by a mom of young children. And in the article, uh, she, she talks about the state of her house. And she looks at it and she said, this place is a disaster, right? There is crap everywhere. There are toys, there are art projects, there is you know, laundry all the time, there are dishes that always have to, it is a mess. And she said, and it was getting to me. I was so frustrated, I was so annoyed, I was so irritated that, that all of this stuff was there, right? Just this big pile of, of junk. And then I paused for a minute, right? And she thought. Now, so far, we might describe what we've been saying today. She's looking at that surface level of reality, right? What can I observe? I can observe that there's stuff everywhere and I don't like it. But she began to say, I realized that at some point this clutter is not going to be there. And I realized that at some point all of this stuff uh, is going to be however I decide I want to put it. But the reason that it's going to be that way is because the, the art projects that are all over the place aren't going to be being made anymore, right? And she said, and I realized, you know, the books that are, that are all over the floor I'm not going to be reading them to anybody, and they're not going to be reading them to me anymore. And she began to go through this list of awarenesses of all of the stuff that, that meant that the kids were growing up and older and eventually out of the house and was going to disappear. And the way that she summarized it, and I thought that this was beautiful, she said, and what I began to realize was this mess, this junk, this clutter, is my cost of admission. She says, the price of admission to those stories, to those hugs, right, to those art projects, it's the price of admission. And while it's not the, the thing that I would first look at and choose and say, this is how I want it to look, if this is the cost, I'm willing to pay it. And in our language this morning, what we might say is she began to look at the next level deeper. What's the purpose of this clutter? The purpose of this clutter 
uh, is, is to allow kids some freedom. And they will use that freedom, right, going even deeper. Why do we want to allow the kids their freedom? Because at a certain point, their freedom uh, translates to self-expression, and I get to see it, and I get to share it, and I get to be with it, right? And as she moved a little deeper and a little deeper into her thought, did she love the clutter? Was it still her ideal? If she was going to shape the house exactly how she would want it, would it be there? No. But was she able to say, but I can see something beyond that? And so the clutter is, is not the, the, the block that it was, the stumbling block that it was before? Yes. It's those eyes that we're invited to cultivate. It's those eyes and that way of thinking that I think in, in our scripture reading this morning, the gospel reading, that Jesus is talking about and saying, you're telling me to get out of here because Herod is coming and you're seeing what's on the surface. And I get that. And I'm doing something at a much deeper level. And, and yes, I could leave, but then that stuff wouldn't get done. So I'm going to live at this level instead of that level. Right? Our work is to cultivate that to seek that, to mature and to grow in that, to challenge ourselves to do better with it, to seek out those among us who are doing well with it and ask how they do that, and to have a, a, the humility to be able to learn from them so that we can do it too. One of the things that I think is, is very true is that life is constant change. We've experienced it in dramatic ways over the last couple of years, but life itself is constant change and it is always in flux. This is a tool that we have, perhaps even a calling that we have, to get good with how to navigate it in ways that can continue to see the holy in things that we might otherwise miss. As a church, we know that church is changing. The way that churches function, the way that they look, the way that the culture wants to engage in them, and, and the way that they don't is in flux. If we stick on the surface level of stuff, it's got to look like this, sound like this, function like this, prioritize like this, right? We will come to a place where if the culture begins to see the world at deeper levels than us, they will outgrow us. Not God. They will never outgrow God, but they may outgrow us and in some ways are already on the way. If we want to continue our relevance, if we want to continue our capacity to be able to have something to teach, we need to continue to be good learners too, about going deeper and deeper. We help one another, but ultimately Christ is, is the teacher, right? And when we watch the way that Jesus works, when we watch examples like this morning's gospel, and he says, I get the surface stuff you're worried about, I'm down here is to ask of ourselves, how can, we, how can we go to that place with you as disciples and as the church? And how can we help point to things for the world that needs them, like when we hear a mom saying, I'm at my wit's end with my house. How can we help, uh, like that author did, to be the ones that, that point to it and say, have you considered it this way? Have you considered it as the cost of admission and maybe a really holy thing? How do we be those people? That becomes our challenge for, for our discipleship, for our church, and for this week. The challenge is to say, as you go through this week, let's, uh, let's walk through with eyes to see, and as we, we see certain things that, that we look at and say, that's not how I want it, right? Or we say, I'd really like to have this this way, right? Uh, or, or this thing is of such value to me and I'd be lost without it, is to wonder, even just one step deeper, so what's the purpose of that thing in my life? Why do I have it? Why is it so meaningful? Or even deeper, why is something with that purpose important to me in the first place? Why do I need something that does that? Right? How deep can we go? Let's look at that this week, inviting Christ, inviting God into the journey to be saying, Holy Ones, give us eyes to see again and again and again, a little deeper, a little deeper. When we get to the, the ultimate depth, the promise is that it will always be rooted in God's love. Because God is love, and I want to be with God in that. 
Let's look for it this week. And thanks be to the God of love, the God which, who begins at love and from which all things flow, from parking lots to sanctuaries and from fountains to candles. It all wraps back around to God's love. Thanks be to God. Amen. And I will invite us into our hymn, When Jesus Wept. Before I do, real fast, I want to I share something that I observed with you at our first hymn that I thought was kind of cool. Before this two-year break, if a hymn even thought of starting, right, everybody would have stood up, because it's what we do. Anybody stand up for that first hymn? <laughs> right, right. So, right, does it have to be sung standing up? We've been singing songs sitting down for two years. It doesn't have to be sung standing up. Can it be? Sure. What's your purpose in standing up? What's your purpose in sitting down? I want to invite you uh, from now on, starting today and moving on, if there is a hymn for which, for whatever reason, you are inclined, don't worry about everybody else, you are inclined to say, I want to stand for it, stand for it. If there's a hymn that you were inclined to say, I find meaning in sitting, sit for it. This is one of those ways that we allow ourselves to go a little deeper. I don't have to stand because there's an asterisk. I don't have to not stand because there's not an asterisk. I want to look at the purpose, right? Not that little ink dot. Friends, let's join together in When Jesus Wept. Uh, and as we do, part of this hymn will hopefully help to remind us that, that the goal of us as Jerusalem is to say, uh, uh, rather than the, the weeping over, over the fact that we didn't go deeper, we want to go deeper. Let's sing. When Jesus going to change us up actually just a little bit from the prayers of the people that are written in there because one of the things, again, talking about change, is that the purpose of this time is to, to bring to God the prayers that we have uh, for, for the things that are on our hearts and minds this day. And not knowing if we would be uh, in the sanctuary, not in the sanctuary, I designed that to be as we usually do it. But we are in the sanctuary, and so I'd like to invite us to consider... Uh, a couple things about that and to be able to bring those things to God. So the first question I have for you as we think about what we're lifting up to God is, um, what is bringing you joy about being in the sanctuary that you want to let God know about today? What is bringing you joy about it?
I can see people's eyes. That's, that's bringing me joy. Can you hear the person next to you singing? Right? Instead of being a solo. Yes, yes. What else? In the prayers, same thing. We can hear, we can hear each other pray. Yeah. What else? Comfort, feel comforted by the space. Yes, absolutely. Felt, felt a sense of going home. Yeah, into the space. Think of the great cloud of witnesses, the people who have been over the years into the space. Yeah. A very selfish one I will share with you. I think it's, it's in the teens out there right now. Um, and, you know, it's I, I love you all and I'm willing to do this for you. Uh, I, I prefer not to uh, be in 14 degrees or whatever it is, if, uh, if possible. Uh, and so, so there is a bit of a joy is the, the physical comfort, though I know that, that you know, when, when the weather's nice, maybe that'll feel different. But right now, that's how it feels. Yeah. There's no wind noise, right, right, right. Those of you, those of you listening through YouTube, or if you happen to be on the FM, you're not, you're not hearing uh, uh, rustling constantly, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sitting, sitting next to each other in the pew instead of the car, sure, sure. So we bring these joys to God as we enter into this space. What are pieces that you want to bring to God in prayer as we're in this space to say, here is something I don't want to lose from what we had in the parking lot. There's something about that space, and I want to make sure we don't lose that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you, there, you were able to focus more deeply or easily in the parking lot on connecting with God, the reason that we're here, what you're feeling with the worship, and don't want to lose that through some of the things that can be distracting that we get caught up in, maybe some of that surface stuff that we can get caught up. Are the candles here? Are the candles there? Are they lit? Are they, oh, and they went out. So are they lit or are they not lit, right? We can get caught up in that stuff. Don't want to lose it. Yeah, yeah, not getting caught up in that. Focus. Don't want to lose, yes, our brothers and sisters of Grace Episcopal that had worshipped with us for so long, and, and we do continue to do ecumenical things. We'll, we'll talk about that before, at our closing time today, but, um, but absolutely, yes. Don't want to lose that. Um, being able to worship with our, our brothers and sisters through YouTube, uh, we're, we're glad to be with you, and there are ways uh, in which we are bound through this that we never could have done prior to that time. Uh, we, we are thankful and don't want to lose that. There's a familiarity. Uh, I, I was saying to Bill earlier, because uh, we've got the camera here now, and I said I'm, I, I came in to, to sort of get ready, and I realized it felt really weird to be up here, and to be like up here, and to be back there, because believe it or not, even though we were physically further away in the parking lot, uh, I actually felt closer in some ways, uh, because it just felt like we were in it together, uh, right? It wasn't, it wasn't about coming out a certain way, and, you know, we were just, we were there. And so I said to Bill, I don't know that I'm going to be able to stay up there. I'm probably, and I haven't even moved around that much today, but I said, you know, when I was, when I was thinking through the service early, I'm over here, and then I'm over there, and I'm up there. And I said, you know, I want to be, 
as close as I can safely to you because it feels that way to me. That's something I don't want to lose is that sense of closeness uh, that, that came with that. Yes. Yeah. We kept going. Yeah, so maybe that sense of endurance and maybe that sense, I, I might say that sense of creativity that we were able to cultivate to say, let's get creative in how we do so we don't have to stop. Let's, let's uh, make sure our endurance stays up. How do we keep that endurance? How do we keep that creativity going uh, and make sure we don't lose that? So that's something we experience that we want to hang on to. Um, I had somebody, and I think it's one of you, but I won't, I won't call you out on it. Uh, I th somebody talked to me about how nice it was to be able to kind of pull in in whatever you happen to be wearing for the day with your cup of coffee. Uh, and just sit and worship and drink your coffee. <laughs> but, but it might have been multiple people too, <laughs> right? And I've heard from folks from home being able to gather and say, I, I gather in this space because that's the space that makes the most sense to me. Or even at this time, that 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings is hard, but I'll play it back at this time or that time. Uh, and, and that time works. So some of that flexibility, uh, maybe we can name that flexibility. Uh, or simplicity. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. So let us let us pray. Uh, rather than the prayer is there, I will I will offer us a prayer that will bring us to the place where we are sharing our uh, prayers that we bring uh, personally here today. So let's offer. Offer that prayer to say, God, you have done uh, all kinds of things over these last couple of years uh, to, to bring love and light and hope and joy through uh, tragedy and pain and loss. You've brought them into your world and you have brought them to us. And we want to know, we want you to know that we see them and that we recognize them that as we find ourselves once again in this space, that we remember how unique it is. We remember the purpose that it serves, its origins, and why we call it sacred, because we encounter you here in a very particular way. We also lift up to you the remembrance that this is not the only, in place, only place that we encounter you but that you were in all places. And you showed us much, you taught us much uh, in our time uh, so far in the parking lot. You taught us things that we, we don't want to unlearn, we don't want to forget, we don't want to allow ourselves to so easily and naturally slide back into old ways without thinking, but to walk with intent lifting up to you both our learnings and our joys for this space, for this next page in our life together. We ask that your spirit would bless ours and that you would uh, continue to keep us strong and vigilant in all that we've brought here this morning, all that we've brought of who we hope to be for you and gratitude for who you are for us. It is to the spirit of all of those things, yours, O oh God, that we also now lift up uh, in our voices, in our hearts, those people who we are celebrating or are aware are in need this morning to you. And so we lift up Ron and Linda and Carolyn, Heidi and Larry and Tina, Linda, medical staff, Courtney, Shirley. 
We lift up Dave and Rula, Mitchell, Michael, and Christy, Mary and Bob, Bill and Mark, Emily, Raj, Dolores, who I am told has uh, now uh, moved out of, uh, of the hospital, and we're thankful. Robert, Regina, Stephen, Dylan, and George. We lift up to uh, our sister Bev, uh, as she has been in the hospital for the last uh, few days with some weakness. Uh, Bev, and we, we offer prayers for her. In a moment, we're going to offer uh, special prayers for our sister Leslie, who is uh, undergoing some surgery this Wednesday. Before we do that, are there other prayers that you would like to lift up in voice? People of Ukraine. Any birthdays that are being celebrated? Jenna, happy birthday to Jenna tomorrow, yes. All right, Aaron and Ryan, 22nd and 23rd. Beautiful. Wow, thank you, thank you. Whoa, what is her name? Jackie. Jackie. Jackie, turning 96 yesterday. Happy birthday to her. Yes. Any anniversaries coming up? Okay. Then here's what I'll invite us to do for our prayer. Because the two of you are able to sit next to each other, Linda, would you put your hand on, uh, on Leslie's shoulder or arm or whatever is not going to hurt her? Thank you. <laughs> and could I invite you both to put your hand on the pew? And could I invite all of us, because we remember that, that we are connected, but sometimes, again, we need a physical representation. It helps us, right? So what's an example? We can't lay hands on her, right? We can't do that, that observable thing, but the purpose is to make her feel our connection. So I want to invite you all to put your hand on uh, the pew in front of you, I'm going to put mine on the table here, remembering that through Christ, we are all connected. Through God's spirit and through the very wood that we touch from the, the, the table of Christ to the pews in front of us, to the wood on the floor, uh, uh, to Leslie and to one another. And let's pray. Holy One, our sister Leslie is preparing for surgery on Wednesday. And uh, we lift her up to you. We lift her body as uh, it prepares. We pray that you would uh, give it rest so it can have strength for its surgery and its healing. We lift her spirit up to you that anxiousness or nerves would be covered and held by your love, by your promise, by your presence. We pray for uh, the medical staff and all of the hospital staff who will be um, helping to get her ready to perform the surgery and assisting in her healing after Give them clarity and wisdom, strength and energy for the work ahead of them. God, it is your spirit uh, that uh, has the power to heal and to sustain. We pray it for Leslie now, and we are grateful for it for each of us now and always. It is the power 
of the one who teaches us to look deeply and love deeply. It is in his name that we pray, and it is in his teachings that we pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's say we are with you uh, today and we will be with you in spirit on Wednesday too. Mm -hmm. Let's join then in our closing hymn this morning. Open my eyes that I may see. And so, friends, deeper, deeper, deeper we go from this place. Deeper in what we see, deeper in what we hear, deeper in how we understand the reality of the world around us until it looks more like it does through Jesus' eyes. Deeper in love we go from this place, deeper and deeper and deeper, because we go with the love of Jesus Christ. And so we may be at peace. That peace of Christ be with you all, now and always. Amen. Before we part, part, just a couple of quick announcements. 
Uh, one of them is a reminder that uh, on our Sundays throughout Lent, we are doing a uh, educational series in partnership with Grace Episcopal. Uh, it is at 6 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, it is using a book that was sent out to the congregation, but if you need the name of it, get in touch with me and I'll get back to you before this evening. It is at 6 p.m. both on Zoom and in person at Grace Episcopal. Uh, and uh, uh, so you can have your choice of those if you need the Zoom link. Get in touch with me and I'll send it to you. That was sent out uh, also by some of our, our publications. But if you can't find it, let me know. Uh, and we will do that. And just a, a, a reminder, it is so hard because we love each other and we are seeing each other and we are missing each other that we are not doing coffee hour and we're not congregating inside of the building. So even on your way out, wave, bow, blow kisses through your mask, let one another know that, that you are seeing them, you are missing them, you are loving them from at least six feet away. Uh, with your mask still, please, on. Uh, once you are outside, that choice is yours. But here, inside of the building, uh, we ask you to do that. Um, and uh, and uh, as, as much as Advent is a season of waiting, Lent uh, is, is a season of, of, of uh, sort of holding on to things, too. So how joyful it will, will feel in even more and more abundance as we are able to come closer and closer together, we pray, uh, as the virus continues to lift and, and so do the restrictions we have to do to be safe. Love and peace, friends. Go in peace.